we all watched Sarah Garvey's game-changing revelation. Or maybe we, we all didn't watch, but apparently he appeared on Anton Daniel's stream. As always, that, that turned into a Mandingo fight. I watched Lead Attorney stream, where he, like a lot of our leaders in this space, defaulted to defending Ms. Hannah. Matter of fact, I watched my brother James Penn Jr. go up there and, and attempt to have a conversation with lead attorney, but you know, that was quickly turned into a proverbial dick measuring contest. Who's smarter, who can use the best words, who can catch the other person in the most rhetorical traps. Um, I posted the other day, I said, um, conversation should not be a competition. And the reason I said that is because I am new, obviously, to the manosphere. And I'm, a lot of this stuff and a lot of the theatrics that happen in the manosphere, <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with it. I got thrown in here because my series was called Kevin Samuels Started This Conversation. So obviously at the time, Kevin Samuels was, you know, the high chief of the Manosphere. Um, so it put me in a certain part of the algorithm. One of the things I learned as an African immigrant is that um, Africa, and I think you can make an, a good argument for some of the results of colonialism. I think you can make a good argument for some of the results of our culture, because I'm critical of African culture as an African. But Africanness, right, in, in the 21st century does not value its own capital. We can talk about how we sell our valuable minerals to the Western world for less than it's actually worth. We can talk about how we pay expats, you know, expats being people who take their skills from one country to come work for another country. We pay ex expats more than they would make in their home country. Knowing good and well, or maybe not even knowing that they are not that their home country's best and brightest, because if they were, their home country would uh, compensate them adequately. So essentially, we pay America and the UK C students to come lead our best and brightest. But the main thing I want to talk about is how we devalue our own human capital. And it is not until that human capital finds its way to the West, finds its way into the arms, the loving arms of the white man and the white woman, that their, their talent, that their potential is properly cultivated. Why, why am I bringing this up? I was watching King Richie's, King Rich's defense of Pearl and he said something that I, I, I thought should be the main subject of our conversation. He said that, which one of you is willing to offer me an opportunity if I go against Pearl? Basically, he was like, you know, despite whatever she might be, she's got the best deal in town because my channel wouldn't be this big, my bag wouldn't be this big if I didn't side with Pearl. And for me, as black people who care about black people, I think that should be the conversation. I think the witch hunt of whether or not Pearl is racist is inconsequential. Because, you know, we all have had bosses, teachers, whatever the case may be, that we knew deep in their heart they couldn't care less about us. However, we had to play the game because our community does not have the infrastructure to catch us when we fall. So I think for us to be so quick to critique Pearl's employees, for instance, without, to King Richie's point, having any infrastructure to help them when they do exactly what it is that we claim that they should do, I think that is, that's not right. Sara Garvey did essentially what we want as pro-black people. And, you know, he's suffering or could potentially suffer the consequences of losing his channel, having videos taken down because Pearl is copyright striking. When you think from the position of a Pearl, that's exactly what I would do. That, that, that's exactly how petty that I would be. That is exactly like, you Negroes are ungrateful. If it wasn't for me, y'all wouldn't even have a show. Hell yeah, you say something I don't like, I'm gonna take you off. That is what they should do. And, and, I, and I think that that's what frustrates me the most about the conversations we have about racism, because we assume that if we had the disposition of our white brothers and sisters, if we had the circumstances of our white brothers and sisters, that we would be more moral, more ethical in the whole nine. And maybe that's the case. However, when you study history, 
when you, for instance, you, you study the, the, the Crusades of the Catholic Church, when you study Manifest Destiny, when you study the Caucasus Mountains, where our white brothers and sisters originate from, there is a clear, clear, clear incentive to rule, to conquer, and to maintain supremacy. There is an absolutely clear incentive. Because if they do not do that, what, what a lot of people may or may not realize, white people are the minority in the world. Despite the fact that the sun never sets on the British Empire, despite the fact that every damn continent has a American or British base, their only claim to fame is not numbers, because that would probably go to Chinese and, and black people. It is supremacy. So they must, they must maintain said supremacy. And that's why for me, like I said earlier, the conversation of changing white people's mind or changing white people's hearts or hoping that they will do better, is, it's a useless conversation. The only thing that we can do is develop and maintain the infrastructure so we no longer have to be reliant on their supremacy. I remember, um, uh, what's the brother in Atlanta, um, Killer Mike, he was, he was giving a, a speech and he was like, you know, everybody talks about revolution, but like, how many of y'all, and, and we're in the South, because he, he was speaking, I think in Georgia. He was like, how many of y'all know how to fish? Like, how many of y'all know how to hunt? How many of y'all know how to shoot? How many of y'all know how to build houses? How many of y'all know how to install internal plumbing? He said, y'all ain't ready for revolution. Y'all just talking. I think the only proper response for people who actually give a damn is to invest ourselves in productive conversation. And, and like I've said before, that means supporting what you want to see more of instead of giving ears and lip service to what you dislike. Because unfortunately, when you look at YouTube, for instance, our global international YouTube community, on the black side of YouTube, our largest channels are reaction channels and wrestling channels. And what do I mean by wrestling? Panel Mandingo fights that when you actually investigate, why is this channel popular? Well, it's because they have a lot of viral clips of person A cussing out person B, person B telling person C to meet him outside, person D telling person E, you know, that I'm richer than you. That is what represents our community. And we have to be honest about that. 